Oh, thank you for coming this presentation. Uh, I'm Masahito, PTL of Blazor Project from NTT. And this session will be presented me and Pierre Ritwil from University of Chicago and Hiro Kobayashi from NTT. So first of all, I will explain overview of Blazor and what is Blazor. So Blazor is a reservation service in an OpenStax project. The project offers users a reservation for their future usage of cloud resources. So the reservation ensures users can deploy as many resources on the cloud as they have reserved. So if you get a reserve with a Blazor project, you can deploy, you can you can deploy your resources without no valid host or something in this reservation. Next, I will explain the background of this project. The history of this project is a, diff a little different from other projects. The Blazor project was founded during the Icehouse release of OpenStack. In that release, the main developers are from Bur, Enria, Mirantis, Intel, and so on. But after this release, the Blazor project had been inactive between Kilo and Newton. But they, the developers uh, created a great feature in Blazor project. So at least one user deployed Blazor project after Icehouse release in their crowd. And then some of other folks, like from OPNFB of a camera project, has an interest for the Blazor project, though the project was inactive. So we gathered at the Barcelona summit and then we revived the project in Okata release. In the Okata release, we have 10 contributors for in that project. And mainly, the developers are from University of Chicago, NTT, and HPE, and so on. And then, I need, I should say that the Blazor project is in, not in a big tent project yet. So I'm really appreciate the OpenStack Foundation to have, to have this present, uh, the project update track in the OpenStack Summit. So current use case for the Blazor project are these. First one is Cameron project. They are using a Blazor project in their production environment. The Cameron project is a large scale testbed for computer science research. In that case, Blazor guarantees resource availability for experiments. And second use case is OpenFB Promise project. In that case, Resource reservation, uh, sorry, the OPN Promise project is a resource reservation and management project for quality of network service. In that project, Blazor guarantees resource availability for NF VNF VNF deployment. Sorry, NFV and VNFV is a little complicated. <laughs> so, Next, Pierre will explain the main features we, we, we've developed in the Okata release because he is an expert of, one of the experts of user in Blazor. And Thank you, Madam Saito. <clears throat> so um, for Okata, we focused on uh, our main feature, which is host reservation. And uh, what it provides is the capability for users to uh, reserve physical hosts 
So those are hypervisors if you're running in a KVM environment, or those are bare metal machines if you're using Ironic. And then those users get exclusive access to the host that they've reserved. Um, when the reservation is active, they can launch instances on them. Uh, and they do that by providing a scheduler hint to Nova. And then we have a, a Nova scheduler filter that is written uh, by Blazor, that it's, uh, it's in the Blazor code base. And it makes sure that uh, the instances are deployed on the right host. And Blazor does all the internal management of those, um, of those hosts, such as creating host aggregates, moving hosts to them, terminate, uh, removing the host from the aggregate, and so on, when the, te the uh, reservation is terminated. So that was one of our main uh, focus to make this work well in the Okata release. And the other one uh, was to get Blazor back to up-to-date standards in OpenStack because it had been inactive for um, almost two years. Um, so that was switching to uh, new slow libraries, uh, fixing unit tests and Tempest tests. If you go to the, the URL that is there, you will find all the blueprints we worked on. I'm going to talk a little bit more about how we revive Blazor because I think that's interesting for people who might uh, want to do the same thing for other projects. So first, one very important step was to bootstrap the community that was going to work on this revival. And so we did that in Barcelona. Uh, we met informally and decided, yeah, we are going to do this. We rescheduled the weekly IRC meeting, and that's great for motivating people to contribute patches and do reviews and so on. And obviously, the next steps were related to code. Uh, so the first one was to fix the gate. Um, the, the gate was working back in 2014, but it wasn't working anymore in 2016. So what happened? Well, the Blazor code base didn't change, but the environment that does the testing does did. Uh, so for example, the default gate job moved to, from Trusty to Xeno. And uh, that meant that one of the libraries we uh, used, which was an old library from Oslo Incubator, which was trying to access SSL v3 symbols, um, was throwing errors now because SSL v3 is not in OpenSSL anymore due to uh, the Poodle vulnerability. So we had to fix that, and that solved the gate. We could now push our patches. The next step was to get DevStat to work. It's critical for people to be able to install uh, the system with DevStack in order to verify that the, the patches work. Um, and DevStack is moving very, very rapidly, so we had to catch up with you know, two years of changes. Um, you have to make sure that all the environment variables that you're using are still valid and so on. We also had an issue where um, we were using the Nova master table to run our unit test and uh, this clashed with the upper constraints defined by Blazor. Uh, so we had some help uh, with people from the requirements project um, to, uh, to solve that issue. And so that's, that was the basic work. And then we could really um, get to the new OpenStack patterns, so switching to the new slow libraries, removing anything that is not in global requirements, and re-enabling the OpenStack um, proposal bot to get the automated updates, um, using Xeno for all the tests, uh, using the new Tempest plugin, uh, and even get release notes managed by Reno. So for Okata, we really had a release that was following most of the conventions in OpenStack. I think that's critical uh, for staying up to date. Um, I said that we focused on host reservations. That meant we had some, to leave some features behind. Uh, in this case, we deprecated instance reservation because it was relying on extensions from Nova, uh, which were not supported anymore. Uh, but we have a plan to uh, uh, recreate this feature in the next release, and we're going to talk a bit more about this. There's still a lot of work to do to really get a proper OpenStack project. 
Um, we don't have Python 3 support yet. We don't have an OpenStack client plugin. Uh, we are not supporting the new API endpoint styles. Uh, so we don't have slash reservation uh, to, uh, to get access to all our objects. But this is something we're going to work on in the next release. And um, now Hero is going to uh, talk about the future work for Pike and uh, the next releases. Okay, next, uh, I'm talking about the new features and enhancements for Pike release. Uh, they are the main topics we are focusing in the Pike release. Uh, the first one is the instance reservation, which was uh, supported by Blazor in the old Blazor, but it was it didn't work when we revived the Blazor, so we have deprecated the. Uh, instance reservation, and we have decided to redesign the new instance reservation. So uh, this feature is uh, for users to create the reservation of the computer resources for launching instances. So the big difference from the host reservation, which is currently supported, is uh, the host reservation reserves the whole host, but the instance reservation reserve the part of the host. <coughs> and users can uh, request a flavor of instance and the number of instances and the time frame. So for example, a user can make a reservation of the five instances, which has uh, two CPU core and four gigabyte memory and uh, 50 gigabyte storage uh, from next Monday to Friday. Such kind of operation can be <coughs> Uh, down through the Blazor. And next feature is GUI. The Blazor currently supports only the REST API and command line interfaces. So we are planning to build a Horizon plugin for Blazor. And the final one is to improve the flexibility of reservation, uh, <coughs> which means the user can uh, update the capacity of reservation, and user also can terminate the reservation, which uh, once created by the user. <coughs> uh, these features is very uh, important for uh, improve the user experience. And these features are still under discussion, so we would very appreciate it if you could join us to improve our new features. Uh, we have weekly meeting on Tuesday 9 UTC at OpenStack Meeting Out channel. And we also have meeting and forums and session in this Boston Summit. Uh, today we will have a team meeting from 1 p.m. And on Wednesday uh, we have a forum session which we will uh, discuss uh, advanced instance scheduling and we also have a session. Uh, the title is Collaboration of OpenStack Blazor and OPNAP Promise for Meeting NFP Resource Management Requirements. It starts from the 11 a.m. Wednesday. <coughs> and we have, uh, we'll have a Blazor and Nova Placement API meeting uh, on Thursday, 9 a.m. And we have IRC channel, uh, which is OpenStack uh, Blazor. Um, we'd very appreciate it if, if you could join us to uh, make the Blazor more better and better. And this is the uh, Pike release themes for Blazor. Uh, we are focus major uh, major focus is resiliency and user experience. And they are the possible features and enhancements for Queen's release. Uh, the first one is to improve the instance reservation because in Pike release, uh, we implement uh, instance reservation with uh, limited use cases. So it's just for the prototype. And in Queen's cycle, uh, we will sophisticate, it, sophisticate the future. And the second topic is uh, operator-friendly API and a client. Client means uh, command line interface and GUI. 
uh, because the <coughs> futures, new futures uh, has been added to the blazer and some features uh, changed. So uh, we have to uh, update the APIs and client. And the final one is uh, resource monitoring, uh, which is very important for uh, guarantees uh, reservation of the reservation. So uh, we plan to make Blazor monitor the states of reserved resources, for example, the error of the computer host. Uh, then Blazor monitors uh, such kind of status changes and notify the users about it. And uh, this is the themes for uh, Queen's release. Uh, we will focus on resiliency, manageability, and user experience. And this is for Rocky release uh, focus point. Uh, we'll focus uh, on the scalability and resiliency. And that's all for the, our plan for the future releases. And finally, PTL Massa will conclude the presentation. Uh, uh, thanks, Hiro. Uh, finally, I want to say our help for the OpenStack community. So first, the question for the community or the user of OpenStack, the what are your use case for reservations? Uh, reservation is the, I think, there is no uh, idea or no topics with reservations before Blazor project. But now we are discussing how we make or how we use reservation in the OpenStack so if you have any use case for reservations, please tell us your use case. And then it's related, the next two questions is related to the use case. First one is what kind of resources would you like to reserve in that your reservation? And second one is when would you like to reserve it? And then and developer, for developer requests, we need help for three items. First one is need support for the OpenStack infra, like growing Blazor with OpenStack community, like testing, gate job, Python 3 support, or something like this. And then second request for the developer is better integration with OpenStack ecosystem like OpenStack client using heat or something. And finally is, uh, final one is new resource plugins, like volume network, network plugins for, for your reservation, something like this. The plugins are basing on the resources which, what you want to reserve. And so if you have any use case for reservation, please join us to develop the new resource plugins. And that's all from Blazor Project. So thanks for coming and listening and watching the video, I think. And thanks for that Pierre and Hiro as a presenter. And thanks for the OpenStack Foundation that we have this uh, project update track. Thanks. Next are Q and A. Which component in sorry can you can can you use the mic to record? My So which component inside Blazor is responsible for uh, evicting or, or terminating um, things that are, that are um, in a reserved host? So uh, when, when the reservation expires, mm -hmm. um, how is that host cleared off for the next user? 
uh, the component mean the which kind of API we are using or? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming it's doing it in the background. Um. Uh, yeah. Um, so, as Masahito said, we have plugins for different resources, and in that case, there is the plugin for host reservation talks with the Nova API. It has, well, it needs admin access to the Nova API because it needs to create those aggregates. Um, but there is also support for using trust. So, using a trust scope token. Um, from the user context. On behalf of the user, at the end of the reservation, it calls the API and iterates over the instances to uh, terminate instances that are on the specific host uh, that are part of the reservation. So it's all done through the public-facing <laughs> API of Nova. There is no hack in there. No, well, I, I guess my, my question is, is there a, a separate worker or something in, in Blazor that is that is killing off the 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 instances right that are at, once the reservation expires to well, make it ready to make that host ready for the next person. Yeah, so it's it's even event based. So when the, there is a, there are there are two threads, well, two two processes in uh, in Blazor. There is the API and there is the manager, and the manager has a main loop which checks what events are you know being fired. And when a reservation ends, it goes through um, a code path that will do this cleanup. OK, so the, once the reservation ends, there, there's something that sends the event that the reservation has ended, right? What, what is that thing that sends that event? Yeah, That's yeah. what I'm asking. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, OK. Uh, the, the event, uh, the brazer handle and manages this whole event in the Re related to the reservation in the Blazor. So Blazor handle, handle which event is expired which, and which events will be started in next time or something like that. All of the events are managed in the Blazor. Okay. Yeah. Um, so just, by the way, I'm Jay, by the way. Oh, yeah. So, uh, so I'm still, I, I was I was originally part of the of the of the Blazor team uh, when it was called Climate uh, previously, and then I moved to Nova. Uh, one of the reasons why why the Blazor project was was different for a couple of, uh, of years. Uh, maybe just trying to explain why um, why this specific architecture was made. So in in Climate and and Bla I mean in Blazor, <laughs> I should I should give the right name. So um, in Blazor, we have a specific object model, which is called Alice. Um, and when the user is specifies some, some, some reservation, he has to specify a time frame where he wants to start the list and then when he wants to, uh, the, uh, when he, when he wants to end the list. And when that goes through the API, then the API of Blazor is responsible for creating some some entries, if you prefer, in some time-based time table, saying, OK, here is the start of the list, here is the list ID, and here is what the user requests. At the end of the, at the, end of the list, uh, so uh, conceptually, in, in the time series table, um, then you have, you, have a, you have, if you prefer, an entry saying, OK, this list UID is about to end with this specific user ID. So then, if you prefer the the engine responsible for looping over that specific time 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 based series is is taking the list UID and applying some policy. That policy, for the moment, I don't remember the exact details of that, but then those people could could answer that. At the end of the list, there are, uh, I think we, we wanted to implement three different policies about a list termination. One of the one of those policies were uh, was about leaving the um, leaving the user responsible for ending the instances. One uh, one uh, one uh, one of the other policies was about aggressively ending 
the instances if that wasn't, uh, if the user didn't, and I don't remember the, uh, the third option, but anyway, the, the idea was about the, the list termination policy was something we wanted to be um, configurable for the, for the, for, for, for the, uh, for, for the operator by saying, okay, for example, I want to make sure that I will leave room for new reservations, but I could also be kind of gentle with the user and let the user do that. Just to, just to make it clear, when a lease is terminating, but uh, that's, that's just something out of my mind now, as far as I know, I think the, the instance is parked into some specific state in Blazar, or not. Uh, I mean, that's, that, that's configurable. That, I mean, if, if we say we, 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 we are going to be gentle with the user, then we don't kill the instance. We leave the instance, but we put it in a specific reserved pool, which is totally unattached with the compute node. So we make sure that we free up the compute node without you know, killing the instance. So um, we, we are actually making some changes to that. Um, yeah. we, we have made some changes recently. Um, because if, so if the instance is kept running, that's, that causes a problem for the next user who has reserved the same host. So um, now we have a, a code in Blazor that will make sure the, the hosts are freed at the end of the reservation, but leaving the choice for user to um, configure another mechanism right before that, uh, which could be snapshotting, for example. So we, we need the user um, responsible for defining what happens at the end of the reservation. They can decide to not do anything, snapshots. Uh, they could um, you know, shelve, I guess. Um, but if there are still things running at the end time, then the manager takes over and, uh, and kills whatever is still running to make sure that the resources are free for the next user. So, uh, does it support the EPA based the reservation? Uh, I guess uh, uh, most of the source codes should, uh, would be similar with uh, urban the resources scheduling to choosing uh, proper resources when playable based uh, reservation. Do it. Uh, so, sorry, but I'm not familiar with the EPI. Honest platform, honest. Uh, you know, think about the Numa awareness. So, if uh, the playable uh, addresses some Numa awareness features, then this browser should do understanding which Numa should should uh, uh, which <coughs> code. Mm -hmm. On which NUMA oh. uh, should be uh, uh, right? So, at the moment, because in Okata we only support reserving whole host, then you will use the regular NOVA mechanism afterwards to schedule your instances according uh, to you know, NUMA uh, character characteristics. Um, I suppose for instance reservation, we will need to have some support of that, but it's still in the design stage. Hmm. Yeah, so as, as Hiro mentioned in that presentation, uh, we are targeting only the limited re instance reservation in pipe release. So if you have the, the use case for e reserve API or something, please send us the, your use case in the mailing list of OpenStack or somewhere. So then we can discuss the, the use case in the next release or next development cycle. Yeah, because we, it, yeah. Uh, in our five release, we are planning to release instance reservation with some kind of limitation. Yeah. We want to relax the limitation in in further release, further release, yeah, in the Queen Q R or S D U or somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So um, 
I'm assuming, tell me if I'm wrong, that it, it, you have to reserve via a host aggregate, meaning you have to have a separate set of hosts. You, you can't use a, a, a single compute host for both Blazor and on-demand users, mm -hmm. right? Uh, currently, we, uh, our design is, I think, no. Uh, it's simple answer is no. Well, it means you're right. Uh, the, oh, yeah. You have a separate the, set of hosts yes, that's yeah, just yeah. for so, reserving and yeah. separate in, set. In Blazor, there is something called yeah, the free pool. Yeah. And the, with, what's admin, it called? Uh, the free pool. Free pool, okay. So the pool of free resources. And um, the administrator will decide, I'm putting those hosts in the free pool, and then okay. Blazor users can reserve from those. On-demand users don't get access to them. What we're really interested in looking at is uh, how people could use these uh, preemptible instances in combination so that when there are no reservations on the host in that free pool, then you can schedule preemptible instances and just delete them when the reservation starts. And there is some interest uh, from scientific users, so I think we will discuss this on yeah, Wednesday. Yeah. Uh, any other questions? Oh, it's running out of time. So thanks for coming and have a question, ask questions again. Yeah, thanks, thanks. Thank you for...